Hello there guys and gals, the Welsh Hunter here back with yet another 100% achievement guide and this time it's another fun point and click in the hilariously named Lord Winkle Bottom Investigates. Winkle, <laughs> Bottom, <laughs> mature I know, thanks. Uh, this was developed and published by Cave Monsters and is usually available for £15.74 slash $18.99 but hopefully this will nip its big giraffe neck on Game Pass pretty soon. So we play as Lord Winky Bottom, who, along with tea drinking enthusiast, i.e. every British person ever, uh, Dr. Frumple, we embark on a journey to solve an, a murder of an old pal. Kind of looks like a weird alien thing or something. It's fun, it's humorous, and it's easy. All we need in an achievement guide, right? <laughs> right. As for achievements, the majority you'll get are from basically general story play, but there are three missable achievements which you could easily just skip by. And that's for picking up two balls in the prologue, um, reading a specific newspaper about another feline friend expect feline friend inspector. That's what I'm trying to say, and eating a plant in front of the gardener. Other than that, it is short, so we can get this done in around one and a half hours. And again, hopefully the video is paced nice enough, so you don't have to pause it too much. You guys deserve that at least. A winky face and smiley face. Right, so we're gonna start a new game. A lot of the time, like I said, with the dialogue, we're just going to smash through. Now, you can smash through the dialogue with either the A button or the B button, but I prefer using the B button, especially when you're talking to another character, just so you don't accidentally keep on asking them the same question when we have to uh, talk to certain characters, etc. So, just keep spamming the B button. That'll be slice and noise and sleazy easy. And this is the prologue then, so obviously with the, it's a sort of generic in terms of um, buttons and button combinations and things like that. And I'll obviously tell you which they are and what they aren't. So, left stick to move, we're going to interact with the newspaper here on the desk by pressing the A button. And um, that's what we have to do first. We're also going to be coming up to two different achievements in which we will get one, quit the game, start the new game, quickly come back to this bit and get the other achievement. Um, you can check your notebook regularly there for notes um, about my characters we've met. We're, I'm only going to be doing that once when we go for a specific achievement later on. So for now, let us go and get some milk. Well, it, it doesn't matter which one you pick up first. You can either pick up the milk or you can pick up the teapot. It's the order in which you put them in, uh, which is the main one here. So as you can see then, select items in your inventory with the A button. You can press the X button to get your inventory up at the bottom of the screen or you can just put the cursor down towards the bottom of the screen to whap it up. So, this depends on how you like your tea now. Now, apparently, I got lambasted for putting the milk in first, my tea. I've always done it, I always thought I was the normal one, as it turns out I was the weird one. Um, but we are going to put the T in first, so again, press the X button to get your inventory up. A button to click it once and then drag it. So we're going to put the milk in first and then the teapot. Um, basically, whichever way you do it, Dr. Frampel's going to be fuming and be like, Ugh, you goddamn animal beast. But as soon as we get the achievement here, we're just going to quit out to the main game. Uh, we're basically just going to go through that little tiny, tiny section again, and go again. Of course, if you want to, you can just carry on with the rest of the game and uh, come back to this after you've completed it, and that's more than fine, because obviously it's at the very beginning. Uh, but otherwise, we can just start a new game, smash the dialogue here, and go back to it. But yes, I always thought I was normal, putting milk in my tea first, and then, Jesus Christ, as it turns out, I'm the freak. Ah, God damn it. Next, you're going to tell me, you know, men peeing on the toilet at a 90 degree angle. Sitting down's weird as well. <laughs> or wiping your butt standing up is going to be weird too, huh? <laughs> well, anyway, here we are back. I'm not going to get into anything else that I don't do. <laughs> you see, it's just jokes. But, of course, so interact with the newspaper again there. Press the A button. Like I said, in terms of button combinations and stuff, it's it's... It's your standard point and click adventure. Now remember we put the milk in first, so we grab the... We'll, uh, it doesn't matter the order of what you pick or what you grab. It's how you put them in. So we can put the, uh, grab the teapot, grab the milk and housing. Oh, there we go. And now remember, because we put the milk in first this time, we need to put the teapot first this time. So that will be those two. 
And that is the tea first and milk first achievements done within the first couple of minutes. We're going to get a quite a few achievements here within the first sort of 10 minutes or so. Uh, but there are, there are already 15 anyway. Um, so this is the part one of the prologue done. I, I, I guess you want to call it that. But now here comes the next part of the prologue. Uh, obviously it's just telling you... Um, obviously the gameplay and what we can do and uh, things we can press etc. Do not, by the way, do not, let's, in fact, let's just grab the bottles first. There's two bottles here by Daddy Pig. Man, he's really let himself go since the Peppa Pig days, isn't he? Uh, so pick up these two bottles right here, and that will be the public spirited achievement. Now, what you should never, never do in the game is you see the cup of tea in the top right hand corner. Never, ever, ever, throughout the entire game, click that. That's basically asking for a hint. And that will avoid the achievement at the end. So do not ever ask Dr. Frample for a hint by uh, interacting with the cup of tea in the, cor the top right hand corner. Just never, never do it. Which is sorry, I should have mentioned at the beginning. So you can see it at the top right corner there. Don't ever click it. So after speaking to Daddy Pig and going through all the dialogue, we're going to go right to the docks. Pick up the boat hook here from the right hand side. And then the rope we're going to grab in the middle of the screen right there. So again, with the hoof and the magnifying glass. Sorry, again, that's something else I should have mentioned. Uh, the, the hoof is like the interacting and the magnifying glass is sort of just examining. Uh, we don't really examine stuff. So, nay, worries about that. But we are going to speak to... Um, um, this is a, a pelican, right? No, not a pelican. This thing with the weird beak. Pokagon? Pokemon? Oh, god damn it. Anyway, we're going to exhaust all the dialogue. That's what we're going to do every time we speak to a character as well. We, we basically are just going to uh, examine, exhaust, sorry, all dialogue. Um, so you'll never have to worry about picking specific ones. But after you've um, exhausted all the dialogues there with that bird thing, go ahead and look at the open window here back on the street. The king's snout. And even though you're a giraffe, you could probably just get your head in. Apparently that's not enough. So you need to press the X button there, go into your inventory, or go down on the screen. Grab the boat hook, and use the boat hook with the keys. So, yeah, apparently then, uh, you having a long giraffe neck makes no sense. And it's pretty pointless. Anyway, give the keys there to Daddy Pig. He wants to rebuild his shattered life after, well, you know, all the things that came out about him in the uh, press after the... The Peppa Pig days. Ooh, I won't even say nothing. So head into the pub anyway. And a couple of things we're going to grab. A couple of people we're going to speak to here. There is Salty, Salty Walters. And that is who we're going to speak to first then. We're going to speak to Salty Walters. And again, just exhaust all the dialogue. And he's basically going to tell us that he's too, uh, too pissed to take us around. So, I eat every British person ever then. Nope. I, be I, I say you also. We have to. Nah. Now look here, you bounder. We I won't be sailing. Ironic that a man named Salty should dash and go. Well, goodbye then. Fellows. I tell you what, with us Brits, it's either booze or cup of tea brews. That's all. That's all. That's all we drink. Maybe a bit of squash now and again. Maybe a Coca Cola when we're feeling ever ever so feisty. Uh, but anyway, go through the dialogue here once again with Daddy Pig. And uh, we can just say good boy. Um. Now what we're going to do is grab the barrel right there, which is just next to the stool, so make sure to grab that. So you press the A button, of course, and then go down to the sort of interaction button and press the A button again. Uh, interact with the rum jug here on the bar. Now, Danny Pig is not going to let us take it. Says it reminds him too much of uh, George, who, who uh, sadly, well, I can't say it. Uh, but anyway, now we can speak to him, Danny Pig again, and ask him about the rum jug. Now, after you say goodbye to him, you can actually go ahead and take the rum jug. Now, I actually forget it here, which is fine. I'll come back to it. This is the first of, I think, three times where um, I forget to pick up an item, but it literally takes, like, seconds just to go back. So don't worry about that. Um, so I don't go, like, too far off the track. I try to keep it as neat and tidy as I can, but I think it's about two or three times there where I sort of mess up, and we just have to backtrack ever so slightly. It's kind of a minor inconvenience. But anyway, as you can just see, I smashed open the left window. Uh, so let's go back into the pub now. Now Daddy Pig has to put the fire on. And he's a, to be fair, he's a, he's a bit worried because, you know, pigs near fire. 
tastes damn delicious. Damn delicious. So let's grab the poker there from the, the next to the fireplace. And after we do that, what we can do is again go into our inventory, get the poker, press the A button once, drag it over to the fireplace, and I mean, as a monocle wearing, hat wearing, pipe wearing, suit wearing giraffe, I'm not sure where you're supposed to put that, but we have the uh, poker with hotness on it, with fire on it. And make sure to grab the jum rug, uh, rum jug if you didn't. <laughs> if not, again, don't worry, well, I'll go and grab that now. Um, use the hot poker and use it on the barrel of tar right next to the seagull right there. Seagull just wants to get off his nut and that'll be fine as soon as we grab the rum jug. Which, as you can see, I'm now going, oh, damn it! I forgot it. Sorry, sorry. But if you already grabbed it, just give your rum jug to the seagull to watch him get... Well, I mean, I've never seen any... Uh, well, I've never seen a pirate drink rum, to be honest, but... Uh, yeah, he gets it down him like a pirate. So when you do have it, like I said, it, like I said, when if I, I, it's literally three things I end up forgetting. It's kind of a minor inconvenience where I just go to the next room for about ten seconds. That's all. So the pirate, uh, the seagull pirate, gets completely off his um, nut, and then with that, then we can grab the box of tools in front of him and uh, grab the saw. Thank you, Mr. Saw Seesaw. Now what we can do is use the saw. And you press the A button, go over to the empty barrel in your inventory and press the A button again. And that is how you combine items. So after that's done, what we could do then is grab the pile of wood and give it to the... Oh man, why can I not remember what this goddamn bird is? I am obviously very smart. Anyway, give the... <laughs> and give the poker with tar on it as well to the dock worker. We'll just call him a dock worker. So the pile of wood and the... Pile of tar, the poker with the tar, that'll repair his ship. And while we're here, what we can do is now grab the em the rope and use it with the empty rum jug. And then we can use the rug rug with rope, jug with rope, and use it with the sea. And we've got some delicious seawater, you know. Keeps the veins pumping. So we go back to the street, we can go back to the pub. And we're almost basically done now with the prologue, so what we've got to do is go to the right and you can see a bell just where the rum jug was. Interact with said bell. Daddy P's going to be like, oink, ho ho ho, uh, pepper, and stuff. And while Salty Waters is over there, what we're going to do is go into our inventory, grab the jug of seawater and put it in his beer. And it's going to make it taste like... Now, I can't really... I can't really explain it, but there is a pint of beer that I tasted the other day. It was out, out in Cardiff. Quick story. And there was a pint called Barry Island, and it genuinely tasted like pissy seawater. So only if you're sort of Welsh and you've been around Cardiff and you've had a pint of Barry Island will you know that. But uh, that's what I assumed it was anyway. Seawater just tastes like whiz. So with that done, we can go back to the docks, interact with Salty Waters here, and... This ends the prologue. But, uh, yeah, I'm wondering if anyone else gets it. Has anyone else had a pint that tastes like just pure... Just pure... Death piss. I don't know if that's a thing, but it is now. So this is Act 1 then, now for Act 1 and 2 and 3, this is basically where we're going to stay for the entirety of the game, is inside this mansion. Um, so I've tried to keep it as neat and tidy as possible, not backtracking and not going back and forth too much. So I've tried to keep it as uh, neat as I can, 
Hopefully that works. So we're going to speak to Beryl, the greatest of all time, the GOAT. And again, just uh, interact with everything and go through all the dialogue options. Oh, yes. What can you tell me about? I don't know any of them well. Thank you very much. Do you know why we've all been... Oh, I'm sorry, my lord. Right, so then, after speaking to Meryl here, then, what we're going to do is go and use the phone on the right-hand side. Of course, this is the 1920s. We don't have uh, any other phone. Somehow, though, a giraffe can use one of these phones and somehow dial as well. So, that's even more impressive. What the devil? The lights have gone out. What on earth was all that? I'm not sure. I tell you, the t Crikey, that's a bit of a mess. So this is only a short house, even though it is supposed to be a mansion, so you'll get used to things a lot quickly. So going into the right-hand side door, which is called the drawing room. So nip in there, and now, like I said, every time you see a new character, we're going to speak to him and go through every dialogue option. So with the first one, General P Reverend Peabody right here, go through all the dialogue options again. I believe I am a... Do you know why Gilfrey and... Oh, I'm a... It is most... Well, thank you. Talking to a priest, make sure there's no kids about her. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Anyway, speak to the cat called Sir Winslet, who, for some reason, constantly looks like he has something in his mouth when he's not talking. It looks like, you know, when you blow your cheeks up because you're trying to hide something that you've eaten? Yeah, the, the, this cat kind of looks like that for some reason. Very funny, though. But they I just happen to think it's rather... Plus, he bashes bonds on the ceiling if he tried to... And how do you know, Gilfrey? In reverse order. Um... You're a journalist, you say. Could that... <laughs> you didn't get along with Gil... Well, I mean... So you're engaged... Oh, Winklebottom, I'm a... You didn't get on with the ad... It was nothing he said to me. I say, that's... Too many parties are... Most of... I get to keep the time. So, after speaking then to Kate Winslet, what we're going to do is examine the tube on the right-hand side. So if you go to the right, you can see where the weird little alien thing, Admiral Gilfrey, is. So we're just going to interact with that tube. Now, again, there's a couple of times in the game where we have to um, interact or examine a specific thing in order for the story to progress. So, sometimes you will see me uh, examining something with the magnifying glass and interacting it with the sort of hoof option as well. So, if that happens, of course, just, um, you know, just keep doing that. For some reason, you need to interact with it twice in order for it to go through, but you've examined the body over there. So, interact with the axe here on the left-hand side. It's the axe what you have to interact with rather than the armor, so you have to do it once and then interact with it again. And that basically, somehow, that giraffe is sticking an axe God knows only where. So, in the back room here is called the Orangery. And this is where we're going to get the one achievement with the gardener later on. But for now, we're going to talk to the duck called Constance. You're a Constance pain in my ass. Wanting bread off me and stuff all the time. Jesus, why'd I marry you? Anyway, so once you've spoken to her, what we can do on the left in the same room is pick up the pruning shears. There she blows. Again, I mean, Frumple's no help. All he does is just drink tea all day and talk like this because he's all pissed off with the world. Right, so these, this tasty looking plant, do not eat this yet. For the love of God, do not eat this yet. We're going to wait until the gardener comes in a little later on. So the tropical pitcher plant. Now, this is another one of those things where I had to examine and interact with it twice just to be on the safe side. Um... So basically, Lord Winky Bottom here is going to say uh, he has no idea what it is. So he's not going to touch it. But the first time I'd done this, um, it didn't actually count. So the book that I needed for this didn't work. So I was going crazy trying to figure out what the hell was going on. So interacted with it uh, twice just to be on the safe side there. And then we can just move on. So after we've done that, we can now head back to the hallway. So back to the dining room, or the drawing room. Um, uh, back to the hallway. Again, there are items that we can grab, but we can't actually grab them yet until later on. So go to the dining room here is on the left-hand side. Now we're going to speak to Dale Celia and Madame Levening. Ning, 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 ning. Again, exhaust all dialogue. I'm so glad. Oh, thank you all. Thank 
if you're... What's that? Uh, I say wing one. I'm sure I haven't... But she's famous. Dame's... Greeting. You are Lord... I say, that's a... No, I saw an... Oh, well, yeah. Anyway, that... Well... Very... What's your connection to him? I've known Ethel, but... What can you tell us about the... Oh, I can't get a word out. These modern hearing aids are a miracle. Thank you. And when this ends, then, what we can do is go ahead and eat the flowers. You are a giraffe. You do get hungry, of course. This is, uh... It's all part of nature, boys and girls. See, I am science. I is science now. So eat the flowers. Now again, in the second chapter, or the second act, we are going to need the glass vase, but as you can see, we're not able to pick it up yet. So there are a lot of items around the house which we'll, we can grab later, but you have to get to a certain story point before we can go and grab it. So, which is a bit of a pain because I did try to grab them all, but no man, no man. Right, so after this then, we can go into the kitchen, which is again on the left-hand side of the stairs right there. So head into the kitchen, go ahead and grab the knife from the chopping board, an obvious looking knife, everyone knows what a knife is. According to all Americans, that's just mass stabbings over here, just choking. Um, grab the pan there as well from above it, and then we can open up the fridge and get yourself a cheeky snake. Five bottles of red wine, some milk and some butter. Bro, for someone who's rich, you really don't keep a lot of food in here, which is disgusting. So get the butter anyway. Now we can open up the left, very, very left-hand side cupboard here. And there are, uh, there is a set, a bunch of matches. Now what we can do then is use the knife on the dumbwaiter. Now, I don't know, never know why it's called a dumbwaiter, but it's basically the sort of hole in the wall right there. To be honest, it just sounds like somebody got pissed off with a waiter one day who was hanging out of a wall, so I just called him a dumbwaiter and it stuck. Uh, so we're going to head out to the hallway, and now we're going to go up the stairs into the right corridor, it's the upper right, so go into the right corridor, and I'll go into the study, which is the door directly in front of us, and there's another two characters in here to talk to, Spode, which is this delicious looking frog, and Dr. Price on the right hand side, so again, talk to them, exhaust all the dialogue, don't rightly know, sir, Legal. as you say, well, perhaps, so, we shall small way, Greeting. Oh, hello. I am Lord Wink. I'm Vivian. You're... Yes. Yes, well, medicine is different. From... Oh, don't worry. I'm used... Were you invited here? Me? Oh, no, I... Strange, the maid did... No, she wouldn't. What was the nature of your... You know of Gilfrey's expedition. Anything recently? No, nothing. What do you know of the other people? Uh, not very much. You mentioned the gardener, was it? Oh, well, he's... Thank you, So then, man, few things, few things to do here. First of all, we're going to examine the writing desk on the left-hand side. So, open that up. And then we're going to pick up the letter knife. Now, you have to do this twice. So, there's going to be a bit of dialogue first, where he goes, Oh, this is murder weapon. Sounding more like Boris Johnson there. Uh, pick up the letter opener again, though, and we should actually pick that up and pop that square in our inventory. Right, examine the left drawer and pick up the rolled-up paper, which is basically a map of the island, which is going to come in me 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 mega handy in Act 2. And then interact with the right drawer, and we're going to get an envelope. There's plenty to choose from, and all we grab is one. One stinking envelope. Right, we're going to interact with the wardrobe now, uh, just behind Dr. Price there. And make sure to grab one of the wired coat hangers. Again, all these things. I don't know where the giraffe's sticking them, but they come in handy. So now we can examine the reference books to the left of the wardrobe on the bottom. Now, you ha now, in order for the story to progress, you need this bit of dialogue with the book. Again, the first time around with the tropical plants, it didn't work. So if that scene didn't come up right there, just go back down to the orangery, interact with the tropical plants again, and come back up and interact with the reference books. But you should have that dialogue there with the heat lamp. Uh, now, interact with the newspaper. Here he is, Inspector Waffles. 
He's the name you love to touch. But that is interacting there with the newspaper. That is how you get the TAIL achievement. So again, make sure to grab that before heading out. Right, so what we can do is go back down to the hallway after you've grabbed that. And we can just go... Uh, in fact, we can use the pruning shears first on the wired coat hanger. So use the pruning shears there on the coat hanger. For coat hanger wires, makes sense. Now... Um, use those same coat hanger wires with the phone once again on the right hand side. The Mate, they should have invented mobile phones back then, would have made life easier. Now make sure to interact with the telephone. This is another thing that messed me up. I didn't interact with the telephone, and when I tried to turn the, the steering valve, or the, the valve for the water pump at the very end of the act, it wouldn't work. And that's exactly what I mean. So you have to interact with the telephone first. So now it'll just work absolutely fine. So now we're going to go to the upper left corner. Up the stairs and to the left. And go into the right hand side door here. Which is the bathroom. And then what we're going to do. Go to the left. And we can just start going through everyone's medicine cabinets. So go through the mirror. Grab a cheeky bit of medicine. You know, there's a couple of oh, there's a couple of pills right there. Let's just uh, well, let's get them down. I don't think a giraffe needs a longer stiffer neck, to be honest. But there we go. So out of the bathroom, we go back to the hallway, and this time we're going straight outside. Now, here is the gardener. Then this is Pumphrey the slug. He looks <laughs> he looks just fantastic. Now, what are you going to get when you say greetings to him? Now, if you didn't get the whole reference book thing earlier, this heat source dialogue won't come up. So, if it doesn't come up, again, go to the tropical plant, then go up to the reference books, and then come back down to Pumphrey, and then the heat source dialogue should appear. Again, that's one that confused me the first time round, which is why I was a bit more paranoid by um, double-checking the tropical plant thing. But anyway, we've got a heat source and a, a lamp or something so we're going to interact with the mud just there so it basically says that we've seen a key right job done um now what we can do is go back in and there's going to be a couple of cutscenes that are going to play oh my god it's a screamos quickly <laughs> quick front pull to the orangery miss gilfrey what is it whatever is the matter Oh, Lord Winklebottom! I say, steady on. Out there, Dr. Frog. Are you sure, Miss Gilf? It wasn't a person. <laughs> Not now. Please, try to be calm. Oh, sirs! Thank you! Yeah, a fa Poor fellow looks in a bad chap seems delusional. We came at me out the trees! Um, Looks like he... He can use one of the baits in the server. Right then, Frumple, let's help... As long as I don't have to get too blows, he smells like a... Come on, then. Right, we got the fellow settled. Should as long as the bar guest. I say what? Oh, never mind. Did you say bar guest? He's daft, really, I suppose. Sounds like a pretty disagreeable. Well, one last thing. Dash careless of her. I'll promise to keep an eye out. Very well, we shall see. So, first thing we're going to do is go to the drawing room here on the right and go into the orangery. So we're going to do this before we crack on with the story. Now that the garden of Pumphrey is here, now we can enjoy the tastiest looking plant that you've ever seen. And that is what it will get us. The achievement there uh, called uh, Grand Theft Flora. Uh, <laughs> comes in handy, but still. So again, if you eat the tasty looking plant without the hilariously, fantastically Welsh speaking Pumphrey, um, you won't get the achievement. So he has to be here in order to get the achievement. There it is, should pop now. Grand Theft Flora. Job done. Right, let's get out of here now. So what we're going to do is go out of here again. And we're going to go to the left side dining room again. So head to the diamond dining room. And then what we're going to do is speak to Madam Teeth. Again, I'm just seeing if I can grab the glass vase, which apparently I can near. So speak to Madam Lavinia Teeth. And then choose the option crystal ball right there. Say, what's happened? Oh, it's that crib. Well, that's I even tried mentioning the Scottish. The shark spear play. Thank you for your time. And after this, what we can do is just head back to the right. And we're going to go back to the drawing room. So, 
And again, this is one where, so if we have a look at the fiction books, just next to the armor, on the bottom shelf there, we need to interact with it one more time to actually grab the book. And this is what I mean, you can't, you couldn't actually grab this fiction book before speaking to Madam Teethbag. So you have to do a lot of these things in quite a particular order. So when you grab the Macdeath, the Book of Death by Macdeath. Uh, go back uh, and uh, into the dining room here and give the book to Dame Celia. She's going to be Fjallmin. Thank you. Oh man, what a thief. What a thief I was meant to say. Oh man, what a thief, you dirty git. Anyway, her chin's gone, everyone's happy, job done. Right, what we're going to do now, now again, you can see me try to use the knife with the tie here on the moose, but it doesn't work, so I'm thinking you actually have to interact with the moose head first, get the conversation flowing, illing, a little bit of chilling, and then we can actually cut the tie off. So a lot of that will happen, so if something like that happens and you think what the hell am I doing wrong just interact with it first so you have a conversation about the thing and then it should work so uh, yeah so do that uh, Beryl's not gonna let us so we need to go and speak to the goat and talk to her about getting some very well-deserved breasticle resticle and apparently that's what she goes and does so now we can use the knife on the moose tie once again Sir, but I'm afraid. And with that, we got the bit of tie. Now we're going to go back into the kitchen. And we're going to use the letter knife, which is the smaller, of, of course, of the two knives that we've got. And we're going to use that with the dumb waiter. Dumb waiter trying to hit on my girl. Ah, uh, yeah. So there we go. With that one done, what we can do is press the A button on it and then choose the magnifying glass option to examine it. And that is what will stick his big chunky erection neck down there. Well, that was a tight squeeze. Right, not much uh, to do in here except grab a bottle of lye which is directly in front of you. And again, we're going to have to interact with this twice. So he's going to say, that's lie. And then we need to interact with it twice to somehow grab it, even though we couldn't reach the boat keys from earlier on, which, uh, hey, I, it's just, just a fact. Just an observation. So go back into the kitchen, go to the bottom right corner, interact with the cooker door, and you can see a bunch of coals. So what we need to do then is use the matchbox with the paraffin lamp, the unlit paraffin lamp, to get a paraffin lamp lit up. Then we can use that same lamp on the coals themselves. And then when that's done, what we can use is the saucepan on the cooker. Get sauce, but not cook ya. Cause I need a big bit of butter, right? To get me fat butt through the door. I wasn't lying though. Uh, we need to get the saucepan on the cooker, get the butter in. I was just saying it in a fantastic northern accent, which probably just offended everyone from up northern England, so sorry about that. Uh, my apologies. So, with that one done, what we can now use is the moose tie on the saucepan. So make sure to use the moose tie there on the pan of liquid butter. Soak up the grease. It's like me when I'm cooking fried eggs. Right, now, uh, after this bit, what we can do is just go to the orangery now. So go into the drawing room. Ahem, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, go into the orangery. And then what we're going to do is use the medical bottle, the empty med bottle on the tropical plant. Or the, uh, the medicine bottle, sorry. So use that with a tropical pitcher plant. And that's going to get us some sassasap. So, uh, with that one done, we should be good. And uh, now what we can do is head back outside in the pouring rain. With all the things you said, all the things you said, running through my head, running through my head. So go back outside. All the things you said. We're going to use sap on the mud. So the bottle of sap, use it on the mud to keep print. And then when you've done that, we're going to use the bottle of lye, which stands for liquid, you elephant. Yeah, honestly, I just know. So use the lye on the mud. 
And finally, when uh, Dr. Frumple smashes the bottle, messes it completely up, so uh, thank you very much for that. We are going to use the lit lamp on the key imprint, and that is going to, funnily enough, get us a key. Can't see anything happening. Give it time. Can we go now? I'm so bored. Wait. You know, Frumple, I'd rather think we can. Oh, yes. No, never doubted. Now to find what is the. So we're almost done then with Act 1 already, so we can go back into the house and trousen. We are going to go into the kitchen. And then what we're going to do then is use the key cast, so the key that we should already have, the cast key, and use that with the side door next to the dumb waiter. And oh my god, it's going to come up with this whole new area. The one where, uh, and this is, if you want to know, if you want to have a guess, look, salt into the water. I wonder how he died. Anyway, interact with the pump switch. So make sure that the water there is turned off. Make sure that the water is turned off, and then what we're going to do is head all the way up to the study once again. So back out into the hallway. Up, upper right corner of the stairs, so where it says right corridor, right meow. Right meow. Door straight in front of you, into study. Wah, 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 wah. And now what we're going to do then is interact with the pressure valve first. This is the end now of basically Act 1. So interact with the pressure valve. Uh, it's no use because you don't have fingers to turn it, draft bag. So, but that, apparently that's not the actual case. So we need to use the grease on tie with the pressure valve, first of all. And after this one is done, it still doesn't work. So we are going to use the axe with the valve. And then interact with the pressure valve again. And that will be the end of Act 1. So long metal axe, interact with it again. If it doesn't work, in terms of the dialogue says something like... Oh, I must do something else first. Go ahead and use the telephone to try and call Scotland Yard. And that is how you get uh, past this bit. So again, that confused me the first time. Otherwise, this is Act 1 done. On to Act 2. Oh, bloody... No! I would say that's very, um, what's the word for hating another country? Xenophobic? Nationalistic? Either way, killing off the Welsh, the Welsh one first, disgusting. Anyway, uh, go into the drawing room here. And, um, yeah, so, as we can see, of course, you know, it's, um, <laughs> yeah, kill off the Welsh one first, yeah? It's, I see your goddamn game, cave monsters. Uh, so anyway, Pumphrey is no longer with us. Maybe it's because he was Welsh, maybe it's because he was a gardener. Either way, damn, that boy did. So we're going to go ahead and speak to Dr. Price. And again, just smash through all the dialogue as per... Hard to know. And you were catalog. I wasn't just... Had you made any... No, no... Could we perhaps... I'm afraid... Thank you, Miss Fr... So, there is a hose pipe there that we need for later on, and again, it's one of those where you have to get to a particular point in the story in order to grab the hose pipe, otherwise, uh, yeah, old giraffe neck right there won't do it. So, after this then, what we're going to do is head back out, and we are going to go into the upper left bathroom now. So, we're going into the bathroom, basically, so we're heading into the bathroom, and we are going to examine the dead broski, old Gilfrod. Again, no idea what the hell that's supposed to be, but uh, I mean, he's got six tentacles or something. That's all good. So what we need to do is press the magnifying glass. Um, so you can press both options there. So he basically tells you, uh, Frumpy, what he needs. Then we can press the magnifying glass on Gilfrey, and that will come up with a new uh, option for us with the pockets. 
So we can now search his pockets for a key. And what's this in a little white bag? Why's he got a key in a little white bag full of washing up powder? <laughs> Who knows? Anyway, uh, we are going to go into the hallway. And we're going to go, in fact, we're going to go into the kitchen first. So, into the hallway. And enter said kitchen. Not right corridor, we're going into kitchen mirror. And then what we're going to do is go ahead and speak to Beryl again, and then ask her about the apron, and any other dialogue that comes up. I think it is just the apron, though, that we need. So it's the first thing out of three that we need already, or that we've got. So that one's all good. Thank you, Mr. Clutterbuck. Hell of a British name, that. Oh, Clutterbuck, darling. Now we're going to go into the right corridor here. And we're going to go into the left door for the first time. Uh, but we're going to use Gilfrey's key on the attic. Which is the left door right there. And then we can just go ahead and nip yourself in. There is only one little book on the stairs. One little book. And my mom got scared. And she said, you go into Jeebus. And Jeebus land instead. So pick up the Bible right there. Now what we can do is just head back down. So we're just going to head all the way back down into the hallway. And we're going to go to the drawing room. Because we're going to give the um, the lovely vicar, again, make sure there's no kids about. Uh, but give the priest there the Bible. Right, after this one is done... We're basically going to go ahead and... Oops, excuse me, sorry. Sorry, I didn't mean to. I thought there was a kid behind you then, but uh, nope. So what we're going to do now then is head outside. So for now, we're all done with the mansion. We're going to start having a look around the island for the first time. And there's a couple of options that you can go to and have a look at, but you don't actually need to go to absolutely everything. Uh, go ahead and speak to Spode. All we can speak to him uh, about now is the papers, so that is fine. So... Uh, go down to the island then, as you can see, with the bottom uh, arrow. Now go to the family crypt here on the left-hand side. Now a skull, yeah, skull as a island uh, never comes in handy, does it? But anyway, go to the family crypt and go ahead and speak to Winstrol and Constance. Winstrol, I don't know, whatever the cat's name is. Mother and I were. I was so very. The house wasn't the same. Dreadful business. Had you? No. Not for some time. Thank you. Farewell. Tell us more about this business. Not much to tell. Wish I didn't have to have a job. My life would be. So they disowned you. Well, quiet. Oh. Thank you, sir. Aye, Kat Winslet, isn't it? Like Kate Winslet, not Winstrol, of course. So, head into the crypt itself behind the duck and cat wife and husband duo. And go ahead and use the knife and use it on the vines. So, use the kitchen knife and use it on the vines. Oh, huh, trusty. Yeah, knife is pretty trusty. According to all Americans, that's all we seem to do over here is just stab each other. Yeah, we haven't got nothing else to do. It's boring. So, we just go on mass stabbings, apparently. Um, right, so from here then, what we're going to do is go down to the island again, and this time at the very bottom of the map, it's something called the Jetty, or Just Jetty, so head to Just Jetty, and you're going to see Lord Dogface, uh, whatever his name is there, tasting the Barry Island piss water, but he is out of here, boy. Stop me. It's okay, Frumple, Walters clearly wasn't here. Drunk could barely go there in one piece. I'll have you no- Well, goodbye then. So with that done, what you can do is go to the right and you can see the along beach option. So go along the beach and you're going to speak to Detective Culver, who of course is in, um, Inspector Waffles' best buddy. We got your call, Wigglebot. You don't look like it. It wasn't easy, sir. Well, quiet. That's right, sir. Off. Poor old bird has passed out. Right, so we have to do it in this particular order, and I'll tell you what it is. So go back along the beach, you can see a cave. Now, we have to interact with the driftwood here, floating in the river, to the left of us, in order to grab the axe back from the pressure valve. If you try to grab the axe back before you interact with this driftwood here, uh, you won't be able to do it, and you've got to come out here anyway. So I've learned this 
I've learned a lot of these the hard ways. So anyway, once you've interacted with the uh, driftwood, let's go back to the island. We're basically heading back now to the... <whistles> yep, Guilfrey Manor. That's exactly what I was trying to say. And then from here, what we're going to do then, go into the house. And we are going to go into the right corridor. We are going to go into the study. And we are going to grab the pr uh, the yeah, axe. Just See? See? Perfectly safe, apart from the big death thing at the end there. Sure. Now, this is a photo that we need at the end of the game, but again, that's a story progression thing. Same with this diving helmet, um, which is just annoying. I mean, you might as well just carry everything, and then whatever you don't need at the end, sell it on for some dosh. Job done. Anyway, where we're going to head now is all the way back outside, and we're basically going to go back to the island. So, outside, outside, out pie. Hmm. Mmm, I do like a pie. Uh, so, back to the jetty. See, I've just got Homer Simpson fat-ass brain on me. I have any bit of food, and I'm thinking about it. So, now what we can do, then, is... Now that we've got the axe, use the axe on the driftwood. This might do the job. Yes, I can... And you almost did it without dropping... And um, now we can go inside the moistness of the cave. Oh, it's a big cave. So what we need to do then is, of course, interact the vines with the driftwood to make a driftwood plank. That's what it's called. Yeah, plank. Use it with the lake, and that will get us the opportunity there to go inside the old... Inside my submarine. Uh, isn't there a cheesy 70s song with the word submarine in it or am I going nuts anyway two things to interact with here the first is the logbook in the bottom left hand corner um, it basically tells us about a tune that we need to grab in order to solve some secret in this room next uh, grab the crowbar here from the right hand side of the settee right next to the airlock so always coming in handy mere tell yous now we interact with the airlock itself. Now this is what will enable us to grab the hose pipe, the diving helmet, and the glass vase. So that's exactly what we're going to go ahead and grab next. So nip your buns back outside. Before we do that though, we're going to use the crowbar with the barrels at the back of the shot. So at the back of the screen there, the old barrels. Make sure to use the crowbar on it. Wait, this might be dangerous. Let me stand back first, then you can do it. Thank you, Fiat. Well, look at that, it's full of gunpowder. Right, next up then, go back into your inventory and use the empty envelope with the gunpowder. And again, this is what I mean, you can carry anything because you're a big giraffe. You literally might as well just carry a barrel to your room or something. And then, you know, job's done. But anyway, that's it, we've got an envelope full of gunpowder, we are good to go outside. Next, what we're going to basically do now is just head all the way back to the drawing room. And this is actually another part that confused the crap snack out of me first. So I basically went to go, I, first time around, I went to go into the attic to try and get a tiny screwdriver, but it would not let me for whatever particular reason. This is what you got to do. So we're heading into the, sorry, we're heading into the dining room first. We're going to gla grab the glass vase before we do anything else. The glass vase, whichever way you look at it. So into the dining room first, grab the glass vase, 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 vaseline. Now we can go into the drawing room itself. We're going to go into the orangery next, so we can actually grab the hose pipe. Just so I'm not, you know, I'm just grabbing these three items now, so we're not having to go here, there, and everywhere a little bit later on. It's easier just to get them all now and job done. But what we got to do to get the tiny screwdriver, you got to interact with the gramophone, and then we've got to interact with the gramophone trumpet on top. So that is important. That is how we will get the tiny screwdriver. Otherwise, um, old giraffe head will just say that, um, oh, there's loads of things in here. I can't take it all. When theoretically, yes, he could. Anyway, back to the hallway. So when you've interacted with the uh, gramophone trumpet, we're going to head to the right corridor, the upper right. And before heading into the left door of the attic, we're going to go into the study and we are just going to grab the diving helmet. So again, because we can grab it now this time, we are going to grab the diving helmet this time. And jobs done. So that should be all three items we need now for us to go back into the airlock a little bit later on. 
Uh, but for now, uh, what we can do is th those. So those three you should have now: the, the glass vase, the, the hose pipe, and the diving helmet. So now we're going to go into the attic itself, and we're going to use the crowbar on the door. Ooh, very, very hard. A little elbow grease. Giraffes don't have help. Well, either way, this... Hello? Is anybody in here? I'm sure I heard movement. I can't see... No. Very, very slow. Greetings, I am Lord Winklebottom. Oh, what the blazes? So Tell us who? I do. Oh, not at all. Old. Very good. That's disappointing. I was like, maybe. So, after the bit of conversation is done here, what we can do now is interact with the trunk on the right hand side. And this is where we grab the tiny screwdriver. So, interact with the collection of junk. Again, if you didn't interact with the gramophone trumpet before doing this, you won't be able to get it, so make sure to do that, then grab the tiny train, uh, screwdriver. Next, grab the packing tape from the floor next to it, and then grab the dust sheet off the machine on the left-hand side. Now, what's under here, I wonder? <gasps> oh, I say. My word, what on earth is it? Don't you know what this is? I honestly... It shows pictures. Uh, Any... Well, anything. Uh... How... Uh... So it's a pawn machine there, what uh, Hippo Head was trying to say. That is a pawn machine. You put money in, you watch somebody be naked on it. Tidy! Well, it's, uh, you know, it's one way to occupy yourself in the day, isn't it? So interact with it there. Um, basically, they're saying that they need a coin, which is owl good. So now we're going to head down. And we, now we're going to go into the drawing room again. So head out into the main hallway. And we're going to go into the drawing room. As I said... Come in. Okay. Now, what we're going to use is the tiny, tiny, tiny screwdriver on the gramophone trumpet. And what that's, what is that going to get us? Well, that's right, everybody. It's going to get us the gramophone trumpet. Tidy. So, after this then. Now, this is where I made, again, a tiny little boo-boo. But, you know, it's one of those minor inconveniences for 10 seconds. So, in the study, there's a little coin case that you have to interact with in order to get a specific bit of dialogue here for Celia up. But, grab the trumpet, use it with Dame Celia anyway. Now, if you um, interact with the coin case in the study, she will have two options here. Well, three. One should be greetings, one should be sewing kit, and the other should be coin. So, we can ask her about the sewing kit anyway, because she's going to grab us with that. Um, but if, like me, you're wondering why the coin uh, dialogue option hasn't come up, all it is is because we have to interact with it in the study. So, again, apologies that I'm sort of running about here. So, go back into the right corridor there, go into the study, and the coin case is right next to Inspector Waffles, the newspaper. So, what we've got to do is just interact with that, and then all of a sudden, it's all going to be in Dame Celia's mouth, which is... Die disgusting. Die disgusting it is, bad. So, he let's head back down anyway, into the main hallway and into the dining room. Now the coin option should appear. In Dame Celia's die disgusting mouth. There we go, if we just go ahead and talk to her then. You can already see her chin's bloody covered with coins. So, when that's done, that is finally done. Job done. Done, 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 done. Dan, Dan. I see. It Everybody's they? The theatre. You mean you? Most distress. Truth. Farewell. So now it's time for the autopsy, baby. So what we're gonna do? Head back to the hallway. Go into the upper left corner, or the left corridor, of course. Go into the bathroom and do the autopsy. So it is going into the bathroom, doing the autopsy. So all you got to do is just interact with Admiral Gilfred's body once more. And we're going to see what it is. But it's also going to get us another achievement as well. Again, it's a story-related one. So, so good. I'm not really sure about this apron. Oh well, here we go then.
Is that it? Yes, yeah, all done. He was murdered. And salt water would kill him? Yes, he's a freshwater animal. Couldn't survive. Can you estimate? Poor chap probably only died shortly before the maid found him, but... So we know how he was... Time for a bit of detective work, then. Talk to suspects. Fill up the old notebook. What? Indeed. There's a... Right, so now then, after this, what we have to do is go and speak to every character about everything. Now, just note that the game, I don't think will actually let you carry on with the game until you speak to everyone about everything anyway. So first thing we're doing is going into the right corridor. We're going back into the attic. So after, we're going to speak to everyone actually, just after we do this. And then what we're going to do is use the coin here on the old pornographic machine. Dutty, dutty pigs. But of course, you know, it's not like the internet today where you can just whap up your phone and you're done in 20 seconds. No, you had to make some effort, and phew, you could get porn wherever you could in the 1920s. That's no lady, that's the goddamn priest! Well. Oh. Yeah, it's quite cool. So, shall we go and confront the priest? And be like, look mate, I've just seen your naked slippery body and... Quite frankly, I'm none too keen. So, um, and that's just, it's just not not for me, you know? So anyway, head back to the main hallway. So like I said, we are now going to go ahead and speak to everyone about everything. First up, we are going to speak to uh, Dr. Price in the Orangerari. And now everyone will have about the incident. So absolutely everyone will have a new dialogue option about the incident, what happened, and Gilfrey. Anybody. Not at all. But you got a lot. As well as could be. Because you're a. Uh... Indeed. Not the sort. Most frustrating. And on top of that, I can't even get a. Thank you. <clears throat> and now we're going to go ahead and embarrass the crap out of uh, Reverend Nobody Poobody. So we can talk to him about his past and the incident. Again, any new dialogue options that come up, you're all just going to exhaust it to absolute death bags anyway. That I could, but surely not. Guilfrey would. And why shouldn't he? Uh, the old church roof. I hadn't taken up the. Well, don't worry, Reverend. How is it? That's it. Reverend, could we? What can you tell us about the? Alas, you saw nothing. I wish I could. Well, goodbye. God be. So after you speak and spoken to Pooh Body, what you're going to do is go into the servants' quarters there, which is on the right-hand side. You don't have to speak to Culver; dude's just chilling. But we are going to speak to Ambrose, the old Ambrosio Custodario, and just examine, go through all of the dialogue options again. That's most. Anyway, uh, the rotter locked the door. I suppose they must have thought all that. Ambrose, I regret. I, I know. Do you have any idea who. Alas, no. We have reason to believe they may. No. Well, this is frustrating. So, two things here. One is there are papers just underneath the bed there on the right hand side. So, very important. Make sure to pick them up and interact with them. And two, in order to get the final bit of dialogue for uh, Mr. Peabody. We need to go ahead and speak to him again, but I did not realise this until a little bit later on. So, if you want to, go ahead and speak to Peabody now, and you can ask him more about his past. Otherwise, we're going to go and speak to Beryl, and go through all of the dialogue in the kitchen. This, uh, might be a- <gasps> Oh! My and how? So you're B, then? Oh, my lord, I-, I And- More than anything. Turning to the inter- Are you aware of anybody who might- well, my lord. Please tell us in. Well, my. And you didn't see it. Well. Miss Clutterbuck, it strikes me. Oh, no, sir. Not as kind as he. Oh! I suppose I can't blame him. Well. I fancy I might have resented him for it. Did you ever discuss this? Oh, my lord. I wonder if you could tell us where Gil. Uh, safe. But he must. Begging your pardon, sir. But I'm well, this is most is. Thank you, Miss. Next up, then, we are going to go out of here and go left into the dining room this time. And again, you're going to speak to both Cecilia and Madame Avril Levine and just go through all the dialogue now, once more. 
What can you tell us about Gil? I don't know him at all. Why? A lady has seek. Do you know anything about- Not as- Well, since you meant- Frumpole, this is- Farewell, then. Madam? About the- How well did- Aristotle- Then you don't know- Gracious no- What do you know about- I have tried- A load of rock- Frumpole. Oh, maybe you're- You're doubting your- I might not be the- Thank you for your time. Right, so heading back out of the hallway, we're going to go outside this time. So we spoke to everybody we can in the mansion. So there's two in the drawing, one in the servants' quarters. As so we go ahead and speak to Spode again, ask him about the incident. So two in the drawing, two in the dining, one each in the kitchen, and the servants quarters and of course spode outside as well and the only two that we've got left to speak to are the two by the family crypt but remember after speaking to custard ambrosio make sure to speak to peabody again in order to get the achievement um uh, basically in order to finish his sort of dialogue sort of quest um but again if not don't worry and you follow him along with me it's fine i'll go back and get that but what we do now is head to the family crypt and again, you're going to speak to Constance and Cat Winslet here, who still looks like he's got something in his mouth, and he just doesn't want to tell us. And again, of course, go through all the dialogue options. Do you happen to know if there's a particular tube? Why, yes, there is, as a matter of fact. Thank you, miss. We have reason to believe you're Oh, that... I say, we've been over every blasted day. You wouldn't, Dr. Frumpel. So how do you... One time, when I was just... Thank you, Miss Gilfrey. Farewell, Miss. If we could discuss the. Do you know anything about the circumstances? Not a job. How dare you, Zara? Steady on. How well did you know? Never met the family. So you don't know who. Not a clue, oh. Alas, his only family. Right, yes, I sub. I'm not suggesting it. Mr. Spode mentioned. Oh, rather. And you are rich. I say, well, that's a... I'm not suggesting anything. Well, you can get that, I... Thank you, sir. Now, if you've been wondering what I mean by the final bit of dialogue, I'm going to show you. So if you go into the notebook in the top right-hand corner, again, make sure not to press the cup of tea, for the love of God, you can see that on the, the, the last bit of dialogue, where it's sort of bold, stands out more bold than black, that is the final bit of dialogue, the sort of final clue that we need, uh, or the final motive that we need. So what we can do is flick through everything, and as you can see, Reverend Archibald, hilarious name, um, Peabody, his one is not there, and that is because, after speaking to Ambrosio again, or Am Ambrose the first time, we have to speak to Peabody again. Uh, but it's always worth just having a quick flick through, just to make sure that you're on the same same sort of uh, sort of pages that I am. Make sure that everyone else, apparently apart from Peabody for now, has the sort of bolder, blacker bit of writing. That means that we're all good. We've only got one left to do. And that is Peabody. Unless, of course, you've done him earlier on. If not, that's fine. But what we're going to do first, we're not going to go back just yet. We're going to go to the jetty first. We're going to be doing a little bit of... A little bit of octopus hunting, bro. A little bit of octopus hunting, yo. So go ahead, go to Jetty. I don't know about you, but it makes me pee. My pants when I'm asleep. Right, anyway. Ah, oh, oh, that fantastic singing. Yes, I know, you love it. So we're going along the beach once again. We're going into the cave once more. Apparently, I make a manual save here. Of course, it's always worth doing, making a lot of manual saves. So head in. Head into the submarine. Now remember, we've got the clue about the organ here. And we can also go and save the octopus. So again, what we're going to do is interact with the organ. <clears throat> now, there were a couple of things I've seen where people were telling you to basically go around the island a million times. Which is why I've waited until now to do these two specific things. So you don't have to get the note, go back to the house, do a bunch of crap, and then come back with the octopus. I'd rather just get everything done all in one sort of fell swoop as good as I can. Makes life easier, doesn't it? So, 
After the note drops, make sure, of course, to pick it up. And now, before heading into the airlock, what we need to do is combine the diving helmet with the hose pipe. And then combine the helmet with the hose pipe with the glass vase. Vase. Vase here. And then we can interact with the airlock. Job Tiang. No, no, I'm sure. Right. So make sure to just go through all of the dialogue here with Stringy Bag Octopus Face. Good sir. Oh, hello! I say, how? I say this some... Well, not a... I say, do you want me... Oh, that would be... Goodbye. By the way, what is it with posh old men calling each other old bean and old thing and old boy and old chap? Anyway, we're just going to head, go back into this submarine. Uh, yeah, don't know why that is, and we're gonna head outside. Old bean, old chap. I'm 32, mate. I'm, I, well, I feel like an 82 year old, but, uh, you know, not quite there yet. So, what we're gonna do is use the kitchen knife there with the octopus. And that's gonna set him free! And then again, go through all the dialogue with the octopus again. And he is golden as nuggets. Hey, say, what is it? Nobody... Well, you seem to... Thanks. How peculiar. No, no. All seems a bit off. Well, fair. Goodbye, old chap. So, we are all done now in this area. So, what we're going to do is actually head back to the family crypt now. Just to speak to Constance once more time. Or <laughs> one more time, even. Uh, so, there we go. Up the island right there. So, again, go to the family crypt. So, we're almost going to go ahead and speak to Peabody. But we're just going to go and speak to... Uh, old Constance right there, and talk to her about her family once more, and of course, choose a family history. Uh, not a great deal. What about their wedding? I can't help you, Lord. Thank you, miss. Farewell, Miss Gil. So, I've just done all that bit with the island, basically so don't, like I said, we don't have to keep going back and forth and back and forth, because it's a pain in the old back and forth, isn't it? So, after this then, now we are going to finally see, um, Peabody in Gilbert Gottfried Manor. Uh, no one, no, no one can do as good a voice as him. Rest in peace, old Gilbert Gottfried. Legend. So, into the mansion we go, and again, one more time. Now, remember, as long as you've been following along, you should only have Peabody left to talk to about the incident. And, of course, this is... Apparently, I forgot to ask him twice, which is annoying, but there we go. Um, but, yeah, so after this, then, you should now get the achievement uh, for uh, called Great Detective. And when we go back into the hallway, we should now get an automatic cutscene. Again, if you don't, have a look in your notebook and see which ones don't have the final bit of bold black writing at the very bottom, whatever that may be. Gilfrey didn't let you know in advance what it We just lost touch over the years. He was busy with research. Steady on, old chap. I just need to solve this case. Cash. I say, what if we could get the. Yes, but how? Um, well, I don't want to burst your bubble, old thing, but. Of course, we know it's. So all we have to do. Perhaps both, my friend. Now it's time for a fake seance, apparently. So, uh, what better way to pass the time than to really rile up the old biddies, eh? Right. So what we need to do then is we're going to go ahead and speak to Madame Avril Lavigne. Uh, ask her about Ethelberta, just to, again, just to be on the safe side of things right there. Just in case we don't want to get stuck, all because of one story progression um, thing. Ask her about the seance. I have to ask her about the seance before we put the wire on stuff. So again, if you try to put the wire on stuff before speaking to her about a seance, it won't work. It's just another one of those things. So, let's uh, bid farewell for now. And then what we need to do is go go into your inventory, grab the thin transparent wire we got off the octopus, use it with the clock. Attach the wire to the hand. Then what we're going to do is get the envelope with gunpowder in. So get the envelope of gunpowder, use it on the fireplace, and it's going to be stuck to the very, very top. And then we can go ahead and use the thin transparent wire again 
on the envelope of gunpowder. Don't use it with the fireplace because it won't work. You've got to use it with the envelope of gunpowder. And finally, use the thin transparent wire on the window. Now, as you can see on the floor, right in front of Dame Celia Celia, there are three little wires. Now, if you want to make a manual save here, that's fine because when we start the seance, um, it's all a bit of a timed section. So let's use the kitchen knife on the dust sheet as well. It basically uh, makes a ghost pattern, which comes in handy. But as you can see, there are three wires just in front of Celia right there. So what we need to do, when we start, like I said, the seance will be timed. You'll have about 20 seconds or so to click the right wire. Um, you know, it's easy enough, obviously, when you have a look now, and I'll show you what to do, which is fine. So, what we need to do first is clip the window one, and it is on the very left-hand side, so press the A button there on the window wire on the left. That will open up the window, and just wait for a second until our Avril Lavigne goes, gold, gold, <laughs> right, right there. Next is the clock wire, which is the right-hand side sort of wire on the floor. So, it's window first, then clock, and she goes, good, good. Now, we need to clip the fireplace wire. So that's good, good, once again. So again, after about 20 seconds, if you mess it up, um, you just go back to the beginning and you've got you to start again. Now, use the dust sheet with the holes with Dr. Frump bag. And uh, you just don't click anything. Just keep waiting until she says, good, good, good. Good, good. It worked! The spirits are here! Tell us, spirit, do you have a message for us? Oh, um, yes, I'll say. And what? Well, I'm... Does anybody in the circle wish to respond? Oh, go on. Oh, well, I, I suppose I'll be off then. We did our best. I was rather As I say, we did our best. So, there we go then. That is the Happy Medium Achievement all done and dusted. So, yep. So, that was done. So, successfully fake a seance. It's all, it's all in the name of fun. Just to mess with people, right? It's gravy. So, where are we going to go now? Then, we're going to go into the right corridor. We are going to go into the study. We are going to interact with the egg photo. Maybe this might help. So again, because again, we tried grabbing this earlier, but we didn't this time. So go into the main hallway. Go into the drawing room. And there, on the fireplace, the right-hand side is the wedding photograph. So that's what we're going to pick. We may be okay. careful. Oh, careful, old bean. Yep, 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 yep. Go into the hallway. Go outside. Go to the Galapagos Islands. And then we're going to go back to the family crypt. So this is for the final time. Act 2 is almost done. Act 3 is a very, very short one, which is always handy. So go inside the crypt. We have no reason to speak to scared looking cat and duck face. So interact with the ghost weird statue. Go through the dialogue once again. No longer. I shall be doing my best to wipe this hole. You, I take it, or a I remember. Ever. Seems like we might need to jog it. I remember a <laughs> tip. And right, so she's not much help, but what we need to do is go into our inventory and just use the wedding photo with F. Lebiot. How the hell did you die, dog? And then finally use the egg photo or the baby photo. And that is basically enough now to solve the final little puzzle. So again, there, were, there was a little puzzle box in the drawing room, which we couldn't do until we get to this point in the game. I suppose we had to do that, otherwise it would have been a hell of a lot shorter game. So anyway, back to Guilford Gob Gottfried manager, manager, no, Manor. Enter the Manswan. And enter the drawing room. So... This is a particular order that you have to click these in. So just on the bottom right hand corner there, next to the picture of a giraffe, is the box. So, first up, choose Africa. 
Then on the left hand side one, choose South America. Then North America. And finally Europe. So that's Africa, South America, North America and Europe. One, two, three, four. Once that's done, the safe will open. Na na. Oh, it's a skull. That sounds uh, skullerific, huh? Bonerific even. So, to finish the act, all we're going to do is interact with the documents, and that is that. Quite a bit of dialogue is going to happen here until we get to Act 2. Oh, I'm French now. What have you I'm afraid that And he was planning to announce. Apparently so, but I'm not clear on why he thought it. And we're rather popular. You're quite right. You don't? Yes, Rumpel. Let's gather the. Oh, I do. As you all know, my... And, what's more, that per... Yes, I think that was rather implied from... Now, to recap... Rotten... Now, as well as killing Gil, they escaped the house, briefly dropping the key to the... Well, go on, then. Well, Frumple, that's the interesting question. I'm a Reverend Peabody. <gasps> but you can't... No, I think... <gasps> oh, hello! No? Well, then, let's turn to Sir Winslet. You... Oh. Plus, of course, there's the matter of the inheritance. You are not a rich cat... <gasps> No, no. Very well, let's move on. To Dame Celia. With the Nasa. Really, you stupid battler for. Well, no matter. We still have other suspects, such as. Oh! No. And why not? You believe incorrectly, is it? But I. I'm not finished yet. Of course, you'd forget about me. You worked with Gilfrey, helped him with his research. Maybe you feared he would take all the credit for your work. After all, he took your notes and papers. Perhaps a lifetime. Perhaps. No, probably not. However, that is... Hmm... Could be... No, Spode has been Guilfrey's solicitor for years. So what now? Who did it? Who's the killer? I'll tell you. I don't know. Blast, I was rather hoping that... Oh. Well, I... Actually, sir, if you don't mind, I have a question for you. Culver? Well, sir. Because that's who he is, Spode of... No, he isn't. Look, sir, I spend a lot of time in court giving evidence and what have you. I... Damn your eyes! Good night! <gasps> Damn it! The lights are out! On to Act 3 we go to find Mr. Mo. Mr. Mo, onwards home. Right, this next part is completely random. It will be random for you, but it's not too bad. So we, we're going through one of those sort of chases through the forest. But to have a look, we have to look at these white little wisps. So for me, as you can see, it's straight. So it's like a little ball of sort of white wispy smoke. Next is right. So as you can see, it's like a little ball of white wisps again, if you if you want to call it that. This time it's straight again, as you can see. So it's, it's a fairly obvious big, you know, sort of ball sack of white wispness. Straight again for me. And straight again for me. You only need to do this about five, six, maybe seven times. Uh, maybe a little bit more. But again, it'll be random for you. But just keep following the big, bally white wisps. And you will be as golden as nugget balls. Finally, away. Crumple, look. What's that coming through the mist? I say, I don't much care for that thing. What on earth is it? My god. He's making a run. After him, he may. Ugh, I'm all covered in. They must be inside. Right, we are roughly about six, five, six minutes away now from completing this. So, interact with the cellar doors. So, and interact with the padlocked. So, uh, Dr. Frumpel there, instead of just giving us what we need first, we have to interact with it twice. So now he gives us some gunpowder, which he already had. So go and grab that from your inventory then. There it is, the envelope of gunpowder. Use that with the padlock. Padlock. Nicely done. Right. Next up, what we're going to use is the uh, needle and thread. So use the needle and thread with the padlock. The padlock full of gunpowder makes a happy man. 
Next up, buddy, we're going to use the unlit para lamp, which is all the way on the left-hand side of the inventory, if you can tell. For me, I'm apparently not getting it until there it is. So use the lamp on the fuse. Last dregs of oil, yeah, it's delicious, ha ha ha. And then next, we need to go and use the uh, twigs and leaves that we should have in our inventory on the oil-soaked fuse. And it's going, it's going, it's Chicken Terry going. Eh? And just like my life, it's a big disappointment. Uh, no, I'm joking, it's not really. Uh, but that was a disappointment. So now we need to use the crowbar on the damage padlock. And that is pretty good. By the way, my life is fantastic. I'm enjoying it. It's not, not a disappointment, okay? Um, so, into the cellar. Again, there's literally not a lot that we're doing in here. Um, but we are figuring out that this guy is the real Spode. Oh, and the, the, by the way, the camera gets a bit nuts with your left stick. The um, it, it does go quite fast and a bit nuts, so you'll have to just be a bit careful with that. So, speak to the gagged figure twice. Uh, again, like I said, twice, and he will tell you that he is Ulysses Spoog, who the frog was, or the toad, was impersonating. So, what you have to do now is basically just interact with everything in this room, and then a cutscene will begin. It doesn't matter which order that you do it in. As you can see, I do, a, I do the door first, but we need to interact with the door, the tubes, the chemicals, the table, and the cupboard. So five things there, interact with everything that you can in the room, and a cutscene then will automatically start. Oh well. What on? They're a bar. I wonder. They're noggins. That dash divide. Well, this does. Various chemicals. Wouldn't go sipping those. Good. This equipment. Or staff. What on earth? Why has the light gone out? Oh, I... Ouch! Something bloody well stabbed me. Gentlemen. Price, what's going... Oh, Mr. Winklebottom. I don't understand. I didn't, as it ha... That... It is not. I say, oh... A human. Sounds like you... I ha... Took you a few goes, though. Nobody's perfect, Mr. I'm starting to see why... He didn't understand. Oh, my! It was Dr. Priestley! <laughs> Well, who's seen that one coming, huh? Mystery solved, but she's actually just poisoned us. So, what we need to do is um, drink the chemicals on the right-hand side of us in a specific order. And it's easy to know what the order is, but it's hard because we start getting into this, you know, poison drug-like state. So, first things to do is first, we need to interact with the chemicals on our right. There it is, and then what we need to do is actually speak to Dr. Frumple. So there it is, so interact with him, click on him twice, and then talk to him. And now the uh, chemical bottles will be labelled with colours. So the first one that we're going to drink is the green chemical on the right hand side, uh, left hand side, sorry, so the green chemical. So because, yeah, so because the left stick moves the camera very fast and we're in a drunk like poison state, it can be a bit tricky. So green first, then yellow. On the right. And then after this one, it's going to be red, which is in the middle. So the red chemical. And then finally, it's going to be the blue one. But be careful, there's a purple one as well that you may accidentally hit. But it is the blue chemical is what we need. So it's green, yellow, red, and blue in that particular order. Blah. Oh, my head. They did the job, though. Indeed they did. We'd better get a move on, though. Yes, come on. Spode. Well, no. But I'm sure you know that by now. I thought... You did it, didn't you? The old fool was going to go public about what he'd found. Why not? What... Harm. And so, just for that... No choice. Only you couldn't, could you? You didn't know about the safe, so... Mm, inconvenient. But why not just talk... Get ready, ladies and gentlemen, for the best fight scene in the history of video games. Oh, Dr. Frump. You. I 
honestly don't know what that was. To me, that looked more like Winnie the Pooh trying to fight a frog. And then, uh, what's his name? Little Christopher Winkle Tinkle. Whatever the kid's name is in the Winnie, Winnie the Pooh series decided to come up. Dressed as a mummy for some reason. Uh, that's what it looked like to me. But anyway, Dr. Frumble's dead. Fuming for you. Or is he? Anyway, this is basically the end of the game now. So we are automatically going to get the last three achievements. Providing that you didn't hit the cup of tea in the top right hand corner. The hint system. Um, as long as you didn't do that, you will get all of the achievements. And that will be that. Otherwise, this is just a couple of minute dialogue. Well, anyway, how goes the case? Not a trace of him. Nor this cr- And Miss- Oh, she's being most helpful. Well then, I suppose that just- Well, there is just one thing. Oh, Inspector Cole- Do you think you'll go public with all this? That will require some thought. Well, let me know if you do decide to tell the world. Most wise, Inspector. Oh, yes. And this time, I'll be sure to put the milk in first, just the way Frumple like. And there it is then, guys and gals. So, that was Lord Winklebottom uh, Investigates. Now, I really had a good time with this game, to be honest. And I hope you did as well. If you did... Oh, we can see there Dr. Dumple is nice and alive. There we go. Should have your 15 out of 15 as well. Um, now, there's going to be another little scene which I've actually just left in the game. And it plays sort of halfway between the credits. Which signifies that there will be a second one of these, so I'll be looking forward to that. But again, thank you so, so much for watching, guys and gals. Hope you enjoyed the guide. Hopefully it helped as well, and the pacing was all good, and the explanations were clear as well. Again, let me know if I could have done things a little bit better. Always appreciate the constructive feedback, rather than the, oh, you're stupid, comments. Um, otherwise, that's it. So thank you so, so much again, guys and gals. Big shout out to everyone who continues to support the channel on Patreon. Guys and gals are legends. And with that one being done, I'll see you in the next one. Big love. Send out the word. I want 